Bora TV. The world is thinking. I ended up meeting the woman, a fascinating woman, uh, and uh, actually what I ended up talking to her about was about business because uh, I'd been, after Freakonomics came out, I was anointed as a business expert. Uh, and so a lot of CEOs would call me and try to hire me. So I'd had a chance to talk to a lot of CEOs. But once I, once I talked to this prostitute about her data for about 10 minutes, I thought, my God, I've got another 30 minutes of brunch. I've got to kill topics. So I just talked to her the same way I talked to CEOs, asking her about her business, her industry. And she actually gave fantastic answers. She really seemed to understand her industry pretty well. She was a college-educated woman who had quit an $80,000 a year computer programming job to become a prostitute. Uh, in order to do it. But th when I finally tripped her up, it was the same way I always trip up the CEOs. Because I asked her, how do you set prices? Okay. And the thing is, setting prices is the hardest thing. Nobody knows how to set prices because, you know, economic theory tells you how you should set prices, but, but nobody follows it. Okay. And so she gave me the same kind of terrible answers that CEOs give me. And her particular answer was, well, I just looked out on the internet to see what the other women were charging. Uh, and a lot of them were charging about $300 an hour, so that's what I decided to charge too. Okay, so that drives an economist crazy, right? There's the inverse elasticity of pricing rules. I mean, if you know your marginal cost and you know your elasticity of demand, you know what price to charge. So I, I asked myself, well, what, was there some question that I could get at that would help me figure out whether she was charging the right price? And, uh, and, I, and then I, I, I remembered she had told me that she had a dedicated phone line that only her customers called her on. So I said to her, how do you feel when the telephone rings? And she said, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent. I, I don't really care whether my, my customers call me or not. Sometimes I don't even pick up the phone. And I said, my God, you're a local monopolist. You have a downward sloping <laughs> demand curve. If you could sell one more unit of your good at the same price as the last one, of course you'd want to. You can't possibly be optimizing your pricing. So she looked at me completely blankly. E and economics wasn't really her thing, obviously. But again, I wasn't there to maximize her profits. I was just trying to get access to her Palm Pilot. So I left the, left the issue. But um, it, it turned out, since I, I teach at the University of Chicago, I teach a course on the economics of crime. And uh, as I started studying prostitution, I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't add a lecture to my undergraduate class on prostitution. But it's hard to write a good lecture. As I struggled to do it, I suddenly had this thought, well, why don't I just call my new prostitute friend and have her come to the university and give the lecture for me? Well, I called her on the phone. I said, how would you feel about coming to my class? And she said, oh, no, I'm a very private person. I'm a terrible public speaker. I could never do that. So, so I know a lot about economists and, and enough about prostitutes to know that we share one important point in common. There's no such thing as can't, right? You know, there's it's just what price you're going to do it at, right? There's, there's always a price for an economist and there's always a price for a prostitute. So I said to her, well, what if I pay your hourly wage to teach my class? She said, oh, my hourly wage, I misunderstood. Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to teach your class for my hourly wage. Anyway, she comes down, teaches my class. Unbelievably great lecture. Turns out a third of my students said that it was a single best lecture they heard in their four years at the University of Chicago. Okay, which is a pretty sad statement about what me and my colleagues are doing in the classroom, but I think not, not inaccurate, it was great. But after she spoke, uh, one of the students, we had Q&A, one of the students said, how much do you charge? And she says, I charge $400 an hour. Okay, and I become irate, because I know she charges $300 an hour, and, and I'm paying this out of my own pocket, right? I can't go to the National Science Foundation and say, well, I'm too lazy to teach my own classes, so I hired a prostitute, I'm gonna need an extra $400 on my grant. So I'm on the side of the room, I'm just seething at the idea that, the, you know, I think we have some kind of relationship, and then she rips me off for another 100 bucks. And then the next student raises his hand, and he says, uh, how did you decide how much to charge? And she turned, I'm standing over there, she looks at me, she's got this big smile on her face. And she says, you know, the very first time that I was with Professor Levitt, <laughs> she says, the very first time I was with Professor Levitt, he convinced me my services were far more valuable than the $300 I was currently charging. I raised my price to $400, and it has been the best business decision I've ever made.